history replay this day. Have you ever wondered how the fourth most populated country in the world fought to stand on its own feet and wave its red and white flag with pride? In today's episode, we journey to the heart of Southeast Asia to discover the pivotal moment in 1945 when Indonesia proclaimed its independence. For more than three centuries, the intricate mosaic of Indonesia, an archipelago boasting over 17,000 distinct islands, was gripped by the unyielding hands of Dutch colonialism. From Sumatra's mystical peaks to Raja Ampat's vibrant reefs, each island contributed its unique culture, dance, and art. Such as Bali's legong, Java's shadow puppetry, and Sulawesi's Toraja textiles, to the rich tapestry of a civilization that flourished long before European sails graced its shores. Yet, the allure wasn't merely cultural. The land overflowed with coveted resources, from world-altering spices like nutmeg and cloves to invaluable minerals. Turning Indonesia into the Dutch Empire's most prized possession and economic linchpin. This jewel, while symbolizing Dutch power and wealth, simultaneously became a crucible of Indonesian aspirations, dreams, and an undying yearning for freedom. While Indonesia shimmered as a colonial gem, beneath its radiant exterior lay a profound yearning within its people a deep-seated desire to gleam with self-worth and autonomy. This wasn't merely about escaping the oppressive shadow of foreign rulers, but an innate urge to recognize and celebrate their identity and heritage on their own terms. As days turned into decades, this aspiration transformed into an unwavering, relentless struggle, where every heartbeat echoed the same resilient refrain, freedom. Young Sukarno and Hatta, key figures of Indonesian independence. Sukarno and Muhammad Hatta, not just names, but veritable pillars in the chronicles of Indonesia, stand as luminous beacons of leadership and vision. As they emerged from the tapestry of a nation yearning for autonomy, their combined charisma, determination, and foresight galvanized a populace, breaking the chains of inertia and apathy. With impassioned speeches and tireless activism, they charted a course towards a dream, a free and united Indonesia, where the harmonious chants of liberty would drown out the echoes of oppression. The world wars deeply affected the global landscape. And when World War II reached Southeast Asia, Indonesia wasn't spared. With the Dutch weakened and occupied by Nazi Germany, the Japanese took the opportunity to invade Indonesia. As the Japanese unfurled their flag over the Indonesian archipelago, they extended the olive branch of self-rule and autonomy, painting a hopeful picture for the native populace. But as days melded into months, it became glaringly evident that this was merely a transition from one set of iron fetters to another, as the spectre of colonization merely changed its face. But, beneath this facade of domination, the Japanese reign inadvertently ignited a potent flame in the heart of Indonesia. This wasn't just a continuation of past subjugation. It was the birthplace of a renewed, fervent search towards genuine independence and self-determination. Indonesian volunteer troops and cultural shifts under Japanese influence. As the Japanese sought to harness Indonesia's human and material resources for their wartime ambitions, they inadvertently sowed the very seeds of nationalism they would come to dread. In their quest to bolster the war machine, they mobilized vast swathes of the Indonesian populace, drawing them into roles and responsibilities that went beyond their daily lives. This mobilization, paired with a newfound allowance for an expanded Indonesian political and military footprint, created an unexpected crucible. The Indonesian masses were exposed to leadership, organization, and a sense of shared purpose. Yet, this was a dual-edged sword, forged in the fires of both opportunity and oppression. On one hand, the Japanese imposed strict control, curtailed freedoms, and exercised often brutal authority. 
but, paradoxically, in their very efforts to dominate and control. They inadvertently forged a more conscious, united, and empowered Indonesian society, ready to fight for its own destiny. The atomic bombs dropping on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And then, in 1945, two atomic explosions in Japan led to their quick surrender, creating a power vacuum in Indonesia. The different factions trying to take control. Sensing the urgency, on the morning of 17th of August 1945, Sukarno and Hatta proclaimed Indonesia's independence. An event that shifted the fate of millions. Sukarno and Hatta reading out the proclamation in front of a crowd. We the people of Indonesia hereby declare the independence of Indonesia. Matters relating to the transfer of power etc. will be executed carefully and as soon as possible. While the historic proclamation heralded the dawn of a new era for Indonesia, it also marked the onset of a tumultuous journey ahead. The ink had barely dried on the declaration when challenges loomed large, casting shadows over the fledgling nation's aspirations. On one flank, the British, having established a transient foothold post-World War II, eyed the region with interests of their own. On the other, the Dutch, with centuries of colonial legacy behind them, were not ready to relinquish their prized possession without a fight. Thus, Indonesia's proclamation of independence was not merely a statement of intent, but the clarion call for a nation to rally, defend, and affirm its rightful place in the annals of history. For four arduous years following the proclamation, Indonesia found itself in a crucible of fire and diplomacy. The journey to genuine sovereignty was punctuated with intricate diplomatic negotiations, interspersed with sporadic skirmishes that tested the nation's mettle. These weren't just battles on the ground, but also a war of wills and ideals. Indonesia, fueled by the burning passion of its people and leaders, engaged in both physical confrontations and dialogue with the tenacious Dutch. And as each year passed, with every diplomatic deadlock and battlefield standoff, Indonesia's resolve only solidified. It was a test of endurance, strategy, and the very spirit of a nation. Then, in 1949, amidst the backdrop of an evolving global geopolitical climate and the undying determination of the Indonesian people, the Dutch finally acquiesced granting formal recognition to Indonesia's hard-won sovereignty. As we look back at history, the 1945 proclamation emerges not merely as a declaration of Indonesia's independence from foreign rule, but as a profound testament to a nation rediscovering its soul. It wasn't just about breaking the shackles that had bound Indonesia for centuries. It was a momentous affirmation of a rich cultural tapestry, a vibrant mosaic of diverse ethnicities, languages, and traditions coming together as one. This proclamation was a clarion call, announcing to the world that Indonesia, in all its multifaceted glory, had awoken, ready to carve its own destiny. Beyond its borders, this act of defiance and self-determination shone brightly, becoming a beacon of hope, inspiring countless other colonized nations in their quest for freedom and reminding them of the power of unity and the enduring spirit of resistance. Modern Day Indonesia And so, from the heart of Southeast Asia, a nation arose, determined, united, and free. A testament to the enduring spirit of the Indonesian people. If you were inspired by Indonesia's journey to independence, make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video. Let the world know of the courage and resilience that wrote the pages of history. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.